Please hold. Your call is important to us. Please hold. Your call is important to us. Welcome to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Kulin Nation. Welcome to Smartphones Dumb People! Yay! Look, I should point out, when we say dumb people, we are not singling anyone out, in particular, like you. Okay. <laughs> We're singling everyone out because we've all got these and they're not making us smarter, they're making us addicted, okay? And who am I to call anyone dumb? I'll tell you who I am. Uh, I'm Jeff Payne, and I'm your host, and uh, tonight, thank you very, thank you both, or the half. <laughs> I'm your host, and uh, tonight uh, I, I'm going to be sharing a few experiences that I've got at work. And where I work, or one of the places I work, is Behaviour Works Australia. Anyone heard of Behaviour Works? Yes. I'll set it up. Okay, so anyone heard of Monash University? Yes. Good. Okay. It's through the dope haze, many of you remember Monash University. Okay, so uh, Monash University has a sustainable development institute because we have to learn how to live sustainably, right? Yes. And to do that, we have to understand why we don't live sustainably, and to do that, we have to understand why we behave the way we do. So they set up a behavioural research unit called Behaviour Works Australia. And my job is to translate behavioural science, or BS, <laughs> into lay speak. And that's you. You're lay speakers. Nuff nuffs. <laughs> Mouth breathers. Okay. It's okay, so am I. I'm a lay speaker and I'll be speaking some BS to you tonight. Um, so specifically, we're going to talk about behaviour change and the way these things are changing our behaviours. Okay, so keep them close. We're going to be using them tonight and, and some of the sharpest behavioural sciences anywhere in the world are going to be, couldn't be with us tonight. <laughs> but we do have some of the people from Behaviour Works Australia at the back, so happy days, you know. Uh, and look, basically you're going to meet some real scientists, don't be afraid, they look and sound like normal people, most of them. And normal people is basically what behavioural science is all about. So it's about us and the way we behave and the decisions we make and what we do. So. The Behaviour Works crew don't walk around with white coats and clipboards, you know, stalking people with a kind of creepy look on their face. What? The, what? Yeah, not, not, not yet. Not yet. It is. No. <laughs> I work with them. Okay, so uh, they're basically normal people, and uh, what they do do is they gather data and they they devise trials and interventions based on. Behaviour change for good, because let's be honest, as a species, we are our own worst enemies. So behavioural scientists are basically fighting the good fight to bring out the better angels of our nature. So why are we doing a comedy festival show? Uh, it's simple. Phil Wang doesn't do Monday nights. <laughs> we got a really good deal on this road. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, but seriously, we are here to showcase the work of Behaviour Works Australia, or BWA. What we're going to do is, we're actually going to poll you live throughout the show. We're going to use your phones to show you how your phones are manipulating your behaviour. How freaking meta is that? This is your first poll for the evening. Have you got that option on your phone? Yes. So, I'm in control of my phone and I'm either ready to poll or not going to be manipulated. <laughs> Choose, my friends, the red pill or the blue pill. Just uh, pick anything you like. I'm going to play you some sounds. And, um, uh, Elliot, could we bring the lights up a little bit so I can see all your lovely faces here? I'm going to play you some sounds and I want you to identify the sounds uh, if you look, stop, stop, stop. Here we go. What's that? It's a ringtone from a iPhone. Nice work. What's this? Wait, it's not it. Who said calendar? It's a calendar. Excellent work. It is, in fact, a calendar notification. All right, what about this? Email. Is it out or in? In is correct. Nice work there. Okay, what about this one? Okay. But yes, it's a it's a flute from Picking and Hanging Rock. No, it's not. It's a text and it's going out. Okay. So what do those things have in common? Those sounds? They're defaults. Defaults are basically choices other people make. We can drop the lights now. I think I've seen enough. <laughs> 
we'll be back. So defaults are basically choices other people make for us. And they're really useful and handy because we don't have to think about it, but other people making choices for us can lead to some bad habits. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight with these phones, the bad habits that these phones are. And what are we actually saying tonight? Okay, let me be clear. We are not saying for a second that smartphones are evil or the work of Satan. <laughs> we are saying that they're things, and these are things that are changing our behaviours faster than anyone thought. They've only been around for about 11 years, but we are changing our behaviours accordingly. So what actually are smartphones? Smartphones are a bunch of different devices bundled into the one. So smartphones are video recorders, they're video screens, they are internet portals, they are personal computers, and you can even use them as a telephone. And all of these <laughs> have been bundled into the one device and it's the most successful consumer device ever released, ever. More than cars, more than Tamagotchis, <laughs> more than Tickle Me Elmo's. They have sold more phones than anything else. And they think that this year, 2018, will mark the point where more humans have mobile devices than don't. We'll cross the 50% mark. So billions of us have these devices right around the world. And they're a little bit like climate change. It's happened all of a sudden, and some of the results are a little bit scary. So are they useful? Yes, they're incredibly useful. Our phones are our social networks, our friends, our family. They're the default means by which we can be contacted. They're our connection to the internet. They're the first things we touch and the last things we touch. And they can be the thing we touch most, more than our friends, more than our family, more than our lovers. Okay. These are the things we don't leave home without. They're incredibly powerful. So we love them. And behavioural scientists really love them because of text messaging. If you want to change or intervene in someone's behaviour, a personalised message is really useful. So behavioural scientists have used text messaging to help people pass high school, to engage with university, to stop uh, those at risk of reoffending. reoffending. It's used for mass weather alerts. They're used for medical appointments, dental appointments, even immunisation. And in fact, one of the researchers uh, here tonight worked on a BWA project on immunisation in the state of Victoria. He's here and his name is Fraser Tull. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Fraser Tull. <laughs> so Fraser, you've been involved in an immunisation trial. <laughs> and the trial involved sending text messages to the parents of high school aged children. <laughs> and you would send them a message like, um, don't forget, it's jab day, lol. <laughs> Fraser Tull, ladies and gentlemen, he'll be back later in the show. Thanks, Fraser, for being such a good sport. Without these, millions of us would starve to death. Uber Eats, think about it. <laughs> So what are smartphones designed to do? They are designed to get and hold our attention and they're really, really good at this. And unfortunately, the smarter they get at this, the dumber we are at paying attention to the rest of our lives. So they say that people check their phones 150 times a day. That's once every six minutes. And that there are young kids out there who are sending over 100 texts every day. So let's go to our second poll now. And uh, they did a study. This will change by magic, by magic, by science. And what did people admit they would rather give up than their phones? So they did a poll and 30% of people said they would give up one of the following. Sex, sleep, their passport or their pet. Have a vote now and see what you think. A lot of people think sex. Who thought a laptop could be that interesting? Really? But the answer is sex, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, a third of people said yes that they would give up sex rather than their smartphones. Now, they did another survey. And they asked people about their behaviours with their phones. And over 60% of women and nearly 50% of men admitted to checking their phones during sex. <laughs> Raises a few questions, doesn't it? About these phones and our relationship with them. 